the ABAP schema and the Java schema. Um, which is which is critical um, and no schema is um, different than stack and let me show you something here I'm connecting to the back end now uh, which is Saraswati right which is where SD1 is installed right um, This is the back end of SD1. Um, and what I'm going to do here is Aura SD1, like SD1 ADM, is the SAP administrator, SID ADM. Aura SD1 is the DBA. the DBA user, right? So remember SD1 ADM and Aura SD1, right? Aura SD1 for the Oracle DBA, right? Um, um, So what I did now is connect it to SQL Plus as the DBA, right? That's the syntax to connect Aura SD1 to the backend database. In this case, the Oracle backend database. Right now, I can do a select statement um, against an SAP table, right? So I can just say select star Oops. Select count star from DBA My backspace is not working, so thank you. Doing a typo. So this I just did a simple SQL statement. Select town star from DB underscore tables. It is showing me that there are thirty one thousand tables in there. In DBA tables, which is a system table, right? It tells all the tables in the database. We can describe DBA underscore tables, right? Once we describe DBA under, underscore tables, what's it doing? It's showing me the structure of the table, right? Structure of the table. And the first two fields are the owner and the name of the table. Right? So if I say select um, um, count star from DBA tables group by owner. So basically what it's saying is that there are eight different types of owners and here is the count by owner, right? Except that I should have changed this to say select owner count star from DBA tables 
group by owner. And now it is telling us by different owners how many tables are there. And you see that SAP SR3 is one owner, which has got 30,000, most of the tables. And the other SAP owner is SAP SR3 DB. Everything else is standard Oracle. Right? So these owners are the schema owners. So that means there are two separate schemas, SAP SR3 and SAP SR3 DB. SAP SR3 is the ABAP schema. SAP SR3 DB is the Java schema. Right? Um, so you will see the same way in SQL Server also, two separate owners. Right? Uh, SAP SR3 and SAP SR3 DB, so two separate schemas. Um, so the ABAP stack is going to connect to tables in SAP SR3. The Java stack is going to connect to tables in SAP SR3 DB. And so, and the reason I'm showing it is because it's simple to read about it, but you know, obviously as this training, the key thing is to kind of show you at the back end, you know, what is being talked about, and you will see a lot of this, right? And in the first two or three days, you will get a lot of pieces of your jigsaw puzzle delivered to you, but maybe the puzzle won't come together till we get to the third, fourth, fifth class, right? And then suddenly the puzzle is going to start coming together. Um, right. Any questions on this stuff? So just remember that the two important commands here, right? One is SQL plus, open quotes, forward slash, access DBA, close quote, right? You guys can do this stuff, right? Given uh, what, uh, you know, the access which has been provided to you. And the next is in there, select owner count star, owner comma count star from DBA tables, group by owner. Right now, I'm, I'm connected to the backend database, right, as SQL Plus. Um, so database with two schemas, we looked at that. Um, then we would have the central instance of ABAP, right, essentially. Um, if you do PS minus EF, you would see all the ABAP work processes listed. And we're going to talk more about it. Uh, also, there are certain other ABAP work processes and services like the message server, the gateway, internet communication manager, which is an optional um, work process. Also make up the ABAP stack. On the Java side, similarly, there is a central instance on the Java as well. Same to what's available on the ABAP. Um, that central instance has got one Java dispatcher and at least one Java server process, right? Um, There is also a central services instance on Java side, which has got a message server and an NQ process. Actually, those two processes are what make an instance a central instance, a message server and an NQ. And we'll talk about what a message server does and what an NQ does. On the ABAP side also, the central instance has got a message server work process and an NQ work process. The Java instance, unlike an ABAP, has got a separate work process which ABAP does not have, which is called SDM. 
Software Deployment Manager. So now here, what they are showing is a graphical rendition of a very, very important slide. A graphical rendition of an ABAP only stack. That means if you only installed the ABAP instance. Java only stack if you only install the Java instance. And a dual stack if you install both the stacks. If I just look at the database side of things, SD1 is what kind of a stack install? Where we were just now? Dual stack. Why? Right? Just by looking at this, I know I saw both the schemas there. Otherwise, if it were a Java only, I would have seen SAP SR3 DB tables only. Or SAP SR3 only if it was a ABAP stack. And then what is also showing is the ABAP instance, which um, which here is being shown as having a dispatcher and uh, multiple ABAP work processes right underneath the dispatcher and a separate message server. Since it has a message server, what kind of an instance is this? It's a central instance, right? But that's what we just said, is that if it has a message server, MS here, it means it's a central instance. Down here, this is the Java instance. It has got the Java dispatcher and Java server processes. And in addition, it has got a separate Java central services, which we know from the previous discussion that Java central services has the mess Java message server and the Java NQ server as part of it. And in a dual stack, you will have the ABAP central instance, the Java central instance, both running concurrently, talking to the respective schemas, and talking to each other as well using what's called a JCO stands for Java Connector, JCO. And when you receive an HTTP request from the world outside, it comes to Internet Communication Manager, and ICM then decides whether that HTTP request needs to go to the web server, which is on the ABAP side, or the Java application server on the Java side, right? They can both handle HTTP requests coming in, right? It can go here or it can go here. And um, so one, one needs to be cognizant of that. So what, what, what I would like to show, um, and not on SD1, but 